Hey everyone, today I'm remaking my Barbie Swirl soap. This is Barbie Swirl number two. If you read along, you'll see a little bit about what I'm doing here. If, um, so I'm not going to read it word for word, that's just silly. But uh, I am going to suggest to you that if you have not seen my uh, I'm a Barbie Swirl soap number one, um, please uh, take take a little time to watch that one there I will put the link at the end of this one it's not necessary that you watch them in order it just shows you how I got to these bars here's that here that I'm cutting up I did keep some of them because I didn't hate them I just didn't want them to be Valentine I wanted a Barbie soap that wasn't that was more like the classic Barbie these remind me of the 90s um, girl camo look um, and the neon, more neon style Barbie stuff. But um, I wanted more the classic Barbie look for the soap. And so this is what I'm going to do. And while you'll see me putting, like I said, a little bit of info up there as we go, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about remelting soaps that you've made and what can help or hinder that process. Um, because everything else, like I said, it's either in the other video or written up on the screen here. Um, I remelted this. When you see me chopping up these bars here, I did that right after I did, well, maybe not right after, pretty soon after I did um, the first Barbie swirl. So I'm thinking I did the first one on a, a Saturday. I'm pretty certain it was literally the next day on a Sunday where I did this rebatch. I don't even know if it's technically a rebatch. Um, I think cold process soap makers have a very specific use for that term and it doesn't really quite um, equal that. But um, melt and pour soap is made to be able to remelt um, and use again. So with that in mind, um, there are some limitations to that. You can't just keep remelting it over and over eternally. That's um, not a wise thing to do. It will continue to lose moisture and lose water content and it won't continue to melt anymore or won't uh, set back up properly. Um, you, you may find as you're repeatedly melting that it uh, takes a higher temperature to melt it and it might seize up on you or get really gummy. Um, it's really not a good idea. It also may get really chunky as you're trying to melt it and some of parts of it just won't melt and others will. So I, um, the rule of thumb I go with is, you know, you've melted it once to create the first soap and I will remelt it once to make another soap. I usually don't want to remelt it after that. doesn't mean you can't use it. Um, you can, there's several ways you can continue to reuse the soap. Um, it's still usable. Um, you just don't want to get it too hot and ruin the, the actual soap itself. So you can cut it up. You can chop it up in little bits. You can chop it up and make little crystals that go in another soap or just chunky embeds that go in a terrazzo soap. That's one of the reasons that you see many melt and pour soap makers making uh, terrazzo soaps, shredded soaps, confetti soaps, all this kind of reuse is there. It just may not have worked in the bar that they originally uh, made with it and they didn't really care for it or it didn't sell or something happened with it that, that um, they didn't like. Um, like I said, these weren't horrible bars. They just weren't what I wanted. Uh, but there are some other things to consider as you may consider, uh, I'm going to say rebatching, but it, it may not technically be. So don't come after me, anybody. You can tell me if there is a, an official term for remelting the soap, but, um, I'm just going to say rebatching for now. So that we both know what I'm talking about. Um, as I said, you don't want to, um, heat it too many times. You also want to be a little more cautious about how hot 
you're getting it or how fast you attempt to heat it up. I would check it um, a little earlier maybe than your normal um, microwave it for 30 seconds and then take it out and stir it. I might speed that, um, not speed it up, but I might shorten that time a little bit um, depending. This one actually behaved quite well for me. And I think part of that is, is the types of soap I was using. Um, there are ones that are um, have, have a lot of moisture content, a lot of glycerin content to them, which does help. Um, I have, uh, well, you'll have to check in the um, Barbie one. I, I list them all, but it's basically the um, extra clear. They're all um, premium. Cho well, they're not all premium, but they are all crafter's choice um, soaps. And so um, there's a variety in there of extra clear and Tuss of Silk and all. And I'd never used the Tuss of Silk base, by the way. And I don't always mix as many as I have been doing lately. But sometimes you have to go with what your supply is and looking at what you have coming up. And um, that's kind of why I'm not cheating a little bit, but um, using different bases than I may normally use for soaps like these. Uh, it is easier to do in a swirl type situation, um, especially if you're using the same brand, not necessarily the same type. Like I said, you can mix them. When I cut this bar up, the, the original bar up, I'm cutting up several different ty types of base at once and melting them together. And you, as you see, you or you'll see at the end, you can definitely do that. Um, but just use caution because they may not all work together. And particularly if you are mixing brands, that can get a little awkward because not all of the brands tend to have the same um, melting point and uh, the ingredients vary a little more widely, even though obviously the different soaps have different ingredients. And sometimes the melting point will vary a little bit, but it's not going to stray as far as if you're um, changing brands, in, at least in my experience with that. So um, another pointer is uh, if you don't like a bar and you think you might want to rebatch like this, remelt, don't wait. Don't put it in a bag and wait for six months and then decide to pull it out. If you pull out an older soap that you have, that's the time to shred it or cut it up into little bits and make a terrazzo soap or, or confetti soap, something like that, because you're more than likely you're going to have lost a lot of moisture just with time even if they're wrapped even if they're um st you know stored in in a airtight ish container um i'm trying to also watch this a little bit and see if there's anything i missed telling you oh and here's one right here that i did want to mention those little um plastic uh or silicone i think they're silicone sticks um that i use come in really handy for scraping away from the sides I uh, that I think you've seen me do a couple of times now but you also see me poking through with this particular pour if you see that the soap isn't going anywhere when you pour it just one little you don't want to stir it up you don't want to go crazy because you're just going to end it up with blended all one color kind of a boring look um, but you can poke it down a little bit so that it goes through down to the lower layers I'd like to experiment in the near future with uh, a, uh, not really a swirl, but sort of, I want to try a movement with that stick and see if I can um, alter the swirl a little bit without ruining it. And here's another handy um, tool or another handy use for these sticks. You'll see in a minute when I find the right one I'm looking for, there we go, is you can prevent your soap from overflowing when you pour too much like I tend to do. Um, I just wanted to make sure that the top looked like I wanted it. So I was pouring a little more than, um, than was needed to fill it because I wanted the look on the top and I wanted to get it fluid enough to do this. It's really not a, well, it is a swirl, but it's not um, a very controlled swirl because as it's setting up, you'll see that you start pulling skin, the top skin around and it alters the look. So you have to be careful. I don't know if you can notice when I was moving that it was very carefully and the minute I saw it pulling, I stopped. I didn't just boldly go through and force it. 
uh, because you can end up with a real mess that way. And you can get a pretty decent swirl like that on top if you are careful and go at it a little cautiously. Um, And speaking of cautious, this knife right here um, that I'm coming at this, I'm really more scoring than anything. I'm not digging down into the loaf just making a score line so that I can get it out a little bit easier. And if you haven't seen already this little tip with the alcohol, rubbing alcohol, which is used for so many things as I think most of us soapers have realized by now, um, is also great to help you loosen a soap from the mold, um, particularly a loaf soap that's difficult. I'm going to give you another tip right here about removing your loaf soaps, and that is it may seem obvious, so I'm not trying to be condescending, but make sure your loaf is really well set up. That makes it easier because you this move here I'm about to make, just pushing at the top, and it's basically out, but you have to push hard with the top, and if it's even a little soft, you're going to leave thumbprints on the bottom or, um, you know, mush it a little bit, and you c- you'd be surprised how sometimes you can <laughs> pull it out and start cutting it, and it's gel in the middle, so... Make sure you give yourself enough time for it to cool, but please don't put it in the refrigerator. I mean, it's not against the law. Obviously, you can put it in the refrigerator if you want, but if there's different types of soap and different things going on, um, you can cause any layers or um, swirls to kind of come apart. Um, And the other thing is, is it will make your soap sweat after you bring it out. And just, that's just something else to deal with. We already deal with enough sweat, um, that you don't want to do that. That's another thing that can happen if you heat the soap too many times. It can start sweating pretty badly on you. And um, I mean, it's not the end of the world, but it's n- it's going to continue to sweat every time because it's just like doesn't have enough moisture. So it's really begging for moisture from the air because glycerin is a humectant and it will just keep sweating on you over and over again. So as you, s- you see the cuts here, as I'm showing you, I wasn't thrilled with those. I wasn't hating them. There's one of them I really love, and you'll see me. um, I think it's that bottom one right there. You'll see me um, beveling that one a little bit later. But I wanted to try to see what the other angle of a cut would get me because there is always that option to cut down through the middle, um, cutting it instead of from top to bottom, from side to side. And... I didn't do the best job of cutting. It's not terrible, but what you see me fighting here for is uh, the knife was a little turned. The blade was turned a little, and it was making um, um, not quite a diagonal, but sort of. So one of these bars, well, the bars on the ends of the sides, um, they end up being, you know, really thick on one side and really thin on the other and I kind of remedy that when I, when I priced them, I weighed them all. And so I, I, they ended up being um, very close in like one, one or two of the bars were five ounces, two of them were six ounces. So I just went with that and gave them a little bit of a different name and a little bit of a different price and uh, told everyone how uh, much each weighed. And that was a kind of a quick fix for that. That's the one I like. I like that bar. I don't know. It reminds me of like a waterfall in places or something like fall, the water kind of dripping down into a pool or lava or something. Um, when you get a chance, when, when I show more the close-up pictures um, a little bit later, I'm hoping you'll be able to see some of the detail. That is what I was really happy about with these, even though uh, they weren't my favorite. Um, they accomplished what I wanted which was getting that uh, more classic Barbie color. And um, they don't quite look like camouflage. Some of them look a little bit like some kind of weird alien, but they're still cool. Um, But what I wanted you to notice is the detail in the swirls. There's a lot of little fine detail in some of these. Um, Yeah, I think I guess you can see it right there. Uh, And some really weird little faces that seem to pop out. Maybe that's just me. Um, they definitely have an ink blot flavor to them. A couple of them match up like you've done, um, the ink blot art or something. Um, so, you know, see what you can see and maybe have somebody analyze it for you. But, uh, there are some fun little 
fun little shapes. I mean, I always find fun little things in the swirls anyway, but these seem to have uh, particularly interesting shapes in them. Yeah, I think this is the one that's my favorite of the of the larger bars. Um, I there's there was something that happened in one color layer that that um, I don't like there to be a layer that looks like it's a solid layer, but it, I mean, it does have detail. And if you see it, that red, that not red, but the darker pink at the bottom, um, I would have loved for that to have been broken up, but it is still highly detailed and really pretty. And that one's cool. That side's cool too. There, that side's broken up. That bar of the darker pink at the bottom, that's broken up. I think that's why that one's my favorite because that's what I like. And that's what I'd like to experiment with in the future that I was talking about earlier with a, a move, a swirl sort of with one of those sticks to see if I can break up any weird little layers that tend to form. I love these bars. The ones that I cut uh, from side to side, I think they turned out really, really pretty. Um, whether And when you're looking at them by themselves and you're not looking at it as an ink blot, they're, to me, even more beautiful. Um, so just that really fine detail. That one almost looked like it was a pen and ink drawing or something. Of course, the back which was the bottom, the back, that plain pink. That was the bottom of the soap uh, um, in the loaf, I believe. Yeah, because the top is the one that ends up with a really bright look to it. And I'll bring that back up. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching me remake this. I'm, I'm happy with the remake, um, happy with what, uh, with the results. I really like both of them. I just didn't want, like I said, Valentine's Day soap. Um, it's still really pretty. Just doesn't it doesn't scream Barbie to me. Um, I hope you go back and watch the original. Um, I'm a Barbie swirl soap video if you're interested in the colorants I used and all that good stuff, and and to see me make that type of camo swirl. Um, and uh, I will put the link to that at the end of this. If you have any questions. Uh, you know where to find me, hopefully, or you can ask, you can comment on the video. You can comment if you are in any of the same soap groups I'm in. You're wel welcome to comment on the uh, post that will have the video in some of the soap groups that allow those. There's There I showed you a little bit of the uh, Rorschach test there. Um, yeah, that one's got some interesting faces. Um, but, um, oh, I was starting to say, uh, the larger bars with the odd swirls. I was saying that there were a couple of them. Maybe I already said it, so I'm sorry if I'm repeating, but they looked like aliens to me, these weird little um, aliens or an alien planet or something. It was interesting. Um, but you never, you. I mean, it's hard to predict what you're going to get with swirls. It just is. Uh, you can, you learn the more you do, you can kind of control things a little bit better when you know what works best for a swirl. Acorn swirl tends to give you a lot larger chunks of soap if you do it at a lower temperature. That's one that came from a top. So that's the top of the soap when I cut that one in half. Sorry, I interrupted myself again. And um, these to me look like little landscapes with mountains on them. Love those. Uh, but yeah, feel free to ask questions. Uh, feel free to comment. Feel free to find me if you, um, you can always ask on Messenger too. I wanted to put the camo soap in there too as a comparison a cup in a couple of these. And there you see it back to back. Well, thank you so much and I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks. Bye.